What a round, what a fight this has been. Fight of the night, fight of the year. You have witnessed history here tonight. Seriously, who's going to stop him? The local scene is as strong as ever around the globe. It is back big time. Welcome to Hammer Time, your ringside pass to the wild world of kickboxing. I'm Andy Raymond. This is the Hammer himself, Mark Castanini. What's got you excited, big guy? Well, Andy, Muay Thai and kickboxing always gets me excited, but there's a lot of shows coming up. j and I Promotions in Sydney, Aaron TS2 Lee, his back fighting in Queensland. Nisa Fury heading over to New Zealand, a big show coming up there early July. And of course, there's more news on our Facebook page, Hammer Time Fight Show, so check that out for all the updates. Big half an hour ahead, this is what's on your menu. We're gonna check out Kokushin Karate, its influence, relevance and bearing on the modern day sport of kickboxing. Our top five ring entrances of the last couple of years and all the big events and news. This is normally the part of the show we look domestically at what's coming up. We're going to look internationally because it doesn't get any bigger than Lion Fight in the United States. They have gone to Las Vegas, the home of boxing, the home of UFC, and taken Muay Thai into the big time. Well, of course, at the Hard Rock Casino, no doubt, where uh, there were so many of those UFC yep. events, um, Lion Fight is really going head to head with the, you know, the UFC in the combat yep. sports in, because, in no bigger no bigger playground, I suppose, than Vegas. Because, Hammer, let's be honest, Muay Thai in the United States is minor. It is minor. At and, you the know, moment. It's, but it has had a, a bit of profile mm. because a lot of the, the big-time UFC guys are trained extensively yes. in Muay Thai. And, you know, the commentators make reference to, oh, he's, he's got the Muay Thai clinch, yep. the Muay Thai elbow, the Muay Thai knee. So all of a sudden, all all these you know fight fans are like, you know, what the hell is Muay Thai? What's this so Muay Thai? Now, you know, it's been a great education, mm -hmm. you know, process for for combat sports mm -hmm. and for Muay Thai. The UFC has been its biggest advocate in some way, so it's great. And Lion Fight, next to Glory, is right up there in, in creating some big events, some huge events. Yod Sinclai, uh, one of the biggest names in the world and yeah. certainly one of the most successful, headlining this event. Well, he is, and he's up against an American chick, Lindsay. Mm -hmm. Now. Lindsay's, he, he really doesn't have the, the fight pedigree of Yodson Clyde, but he's there for the fight. You know, he beat Malipet, and Malipet's a big name, and he's, he's one of the lion fight stable fighters. Yep. So they're really putting, you know, putting their, their cards on him, but against Yodson Clyde, it's going to be a, a big ask, but it still makes for an intriguing contest. He has had only just more than a handful of fights in against one of the most experienced guys and, and most professional guys in the industry. It is a massive, almost unfair ask. Exactly, and of course, Yodson Clyde, um, the winner of the Contender Asia, you, you know, some of you guys may have seen that series a, a few years back. The Contender Asia was huge, it was the, the Muay Thai version of the Contender Boxing Show produced by Mark Burnett and Co. And uh, Yod Sinclair really showcased Muay Thai to the world. It was a great series and he's just gone from strength to strength to strength. And uh, now the guys in America have got a hold of him and he loves fighting over there. You've got to think about it. From fighting in Thailand, small shows, yeah. you know, growing up in Thailand in poverty, and now he's, he's in Vegas. How big is that? How great is that? They're not paying him by the baht. They're paying <laughs> US dollars over there when you're fighting in Vegas. Now, I want to talk Glory Series because this, literally a phenomenon taking the world, not just America by storm. Peter Ertz, Sammy Schultz, Jerome Labana, uh, Gokhan Joe Saki. Joe, yeah, I mean, Petrosian, the, all the best. The list yep. of the best and New York City is the venue in a couple of weeks' time. Aussie's no stranger to the Glory series. Go back and take a look at Glory number five. It was from London and it featured one of our very own. I speak of Stone Cold Steve Moxon. Now, Moxon was up against Jordan Watson. It's Moxon here in the black trunks. Watson in the light shorts. I couldn't think of a better a better matchup. And, you know, I've, I've witnessed Jordan Watson when he was another reality series, the Challenger series. He actually made it to the final of that mm. against uh, Matsu Tam, you know, very accomplished Thai boxer. And it was sensational. It was a fight in Kuala Lumpur. And, uh, you know, it was, you had to be there to believe, you know, the veracity and, and the vigour that Watson fights with. 
Uh, Nugget, who was one of the trainers on the series, yes. was holding pads for Watson. He goes, how much? he kicks like a heavyweight. He's unbelievable, the, the amount of power he generates. Tough as you like, being from England, you know, you know, if they're from England, these boys come from, you know, some working class yeah. suburbs in the UK and they, they breed them hard over there. You, you've got to, you know, admit that. Yep. So Steve really had his work cut out for him and Watson is a seasoned mm. veteran. Even though he's so young, he's still done the hard yards. He's been on the world, you know, stage for a long time. Big news here domestically is that Evolution is back. It is returning in August yep. in Brisbane. I can't wait. Well, Evolution, and when we talk about big promotions locally, that's it. Yeah. Evolution is is the top of the hill. And it's good to see them back. They've had a bit of a break. There's a few business things that had to be sorted out, you know, with that promotional mm -hmm. company. Now they're back. They're talking about their show um, going back to Chandler in, in uh, Brisbane, of course. Maybe a smaller um, stadium yep. uh, in the Chandler Arena. Um, headlining Kaylee Reese, women's yeah. world champion. And, you know, she's a great marquee fighter for them to, to come back with. And, of course, they're going to have all the greats. They're going to have all the hardcore mm. Queensland guys. Mikey Tomahawk Thompson and, and co. will all be on that show. So the return of Evolution is only going to be good for our sport. Looking back over the years, fondest evolu Evolution moments or memories or wow. fights? Well, there's been so many, yeah. you know, and we've commentated so many of them and just sitting there in the stadium and, and seeing uh, the crowd so involved, it's it's great. You know, yeah. you get caught up in the, in the events and they really did create an atmosphere. They used to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars in, in the lighting, the sound, you know, creating the, the walkouts for the fighters that we all love. And we'll see some of them a little bit later. But um, my standout one would have to be the, the contenders uh, event that they did. Yeah. John Wayne Parr, Jabba Askarov, Sean Wright, Bruce the Preacher McPhee, mm. and the list went on all from that Contender Asia series. It was unbelievable. It was I, great. I think we both agree that the breaker, um, the hype, the popularity of Evolution blossomed all the way back to Evolution number six. It was John Wayne Parr, Bruce the Preacher McPhee, yeah. number one. It's certainly worth reliving. Six, Pa and McPhee. McPhee on the front foot. Wants to be busy early. The suggestion is Pa will be the one starting early. And teeing off big time. We're going against script. Well, McPhee letting the uh, the hands fly early in the first, Andy. McPhee oh. on the back foot. Pa goes searching for an elbow. McPhee laughs it off. He throws an elbow of his own. On the back foot again, McPhee. Are walking across the ring. Four punch combination from John Wayne Park. Well, McPhee backing himself into the corner. He wants to be in the perimeter. Here goes Park. Perhaps too enthusiastic. Round two, we are scheduled for five threes. Round kick there from McPhee. Finding the leading leg of Parr, who goes searching with an elbow. Well, Paul, well, Paul Briggs, in fact, screaming from the red corner. The swap stance. The JW going hunting with the elbows now. Doesn't want to turn it into a kick fight because of the, the uh, cut on the shin. It's only going to get worse. He, if he's able to, he should switch back and... Uh, Try Moving to a southpaw south south stance. Yeah. Take down or a toss down there for JW. <laughs> Round number three underway and again instinctively par. Lifting that left shin. Chris McPhee, he's got a good solid game plan working on the outside now. He knows if he gets in range, Wayne Parr's going to let that right round elbow crack down there. Oh, the right hand. McPhee has been rocked. Now Parr goes to work. Turning a spinning. Front foot. 
JW is in the mind it's of Bruce right McPhee. Here, here it is again. McPhee Justin is on the way down. JW now about to tee off at range. McPhee's got to be oh, Beautiful right hand. He is down again. Will he be saved by the bell? We've got to be close to the end of the second. There, there is the bell. And he was gone for all money. I didn't, didn't think he was going to get up from it for a moment there. But he did, McPhee. And that's testament to his resolve. This is not happened. It was Wayne Parn loading with the elbow. Spinning elbow attempted. Fox with that right overhand that just caught the jaw of McPhee. The defence of McPhee right up in that triangle. Very strong upper body. And Parr throwing a good range of punches there. McPhee now teeing off on Parr. Parr smiles. Such a pass there from our referee, Brian Murphy. Just said to both boys, well done. Well, I think... Oh, uh... McPhee has been rocked. Parr looking for the right hand. He wants to finish it. McPhee is out on his feet. McPhee is rocked backwards. Parr over the top. What does John Wayne Parr have to do to stop Bruce the Preacher McPhee? Well, I think McPhee's doing a bit of a doing a bit of a rocky now. Just wants to see the fight out. Wayne Parr calling him on. And Wayne Parr's got to be careful. I'll say the show of the year, and this is certainly the fight of the year, the best for 2005. Bring on right Evolution now. 7. I tell you, it can only get better. It's unbelievable. He goes to Preacher. The oh, two knees. Exchange. Knees. Oh, the two men. Six from the red corner, John Wayne Parr. John Wayne Parr victorious. We have two winners in centering at the moment for mine. Evolution six there. How good was it? <laughs> Well, of course, Wayne Parr, Bruce the Preacher McPhee, it doesn't get any bigger than that. And it really was the fight that launched Evolution to be the promotional juggernaut that it is. Yeah, that was fight number one of three. Time for a break here on the show. After it, we're going to take a look at Kokushin Karate and some of the biggest names who started there. The ring entrances, our top five. Guys, this week in the gym, we're going to have a look at taking your opponent's mobility by breaking down their legs, basically leg kicking. So, a couple of versions of the leg kick. Obviously, inside thigh, never as conditioned as the outside thigh, bit tender, distracts your opponent as well. It can be done off a switch or without a switch, which is straight up, boom, inside thigh. Outside thigh, a lot of rotation, Really let that really let that shin sling at that thigh, like a baseball bat cracking away at that thigh. So from here, good rotation, hand up, chop. Chop away at that lead leg. Shin onto thigh muscle with a lot of impact. The lead leg is obviously the primary target, but there's also the rear leg, which is never as conditioned. From here, I can switch and attack that rear leg. I can step through off my rear leg and shoot to his inside thigh of his rear leg. Breaking down the legs, taking his mobility, getting his focus downstairs, sometimes creates an opening upstairs. So from here, bang. From here, I can launch my head attacks. From here, I can vary and use a push kick up to the face. There is so much or so many options that you can bring through off those leg kick attacks. Again oh, with the low kick. Look at the bruising on the leg of Banks. Up to the head, down to the legs, into the body. That's down goes it. Banks. That is it. Surely Steve Banks can't answer the count here. Look at that thigh, Andy Raymond. Look at that thigh. Oh. Absolutely busted. 
The important thing to know about leg kicks is for them to be effective, you have to target the same spot repeatedly. Uh, it's the repetitive damage that is caused by more than one kick hitting the same spot that really is effective. And the reason it's effective is because you get damage to the tissues where you get tearing of the muscle fibres and along with those muscle fibres the blood vessels that run with them. The blood vessels will bleed and from the bleeding you get an increased build up of pressure in the quads muscle. There's a fine line between pressure and pain. And once the uh, swelling started to occur in the, in the quads muscle there in the thigh, um, you get severe pain and that causes uh, muscle spasm or cramping of the muscle and then any pressure that's put on it either from building weight onto it or subsequent kicks onto that area causes the, the leg to buckle. Because you can no longer put the weight onto that leg, you become ineffective as a fighting machine and uh, that's one of the best ways to immobilise your opponent is to take his front left leg out. And his legs are Go gone. Over. Mark P says that'll do. It hurts just watching it. A, a great illustration, an exhibition of the how, why and why it's so important, the leg kicks. Well, the leg kick is really your, your bread and butter technique in kickboxing and Muay Thai. And of course, taking your opponent's legs takes their mobility. You know, it's all part of the game. And obviously, they'd like to talk about Kyokushin Karate, and uh, your first love, essentially. <laughs> but there is a link there between the heavy leg kicks the Muay Thai and the Kyokushin. Of course, and you know, a lot of a lot of the great fighters have had a traditional start. You know, Sam Greco, um, Peter Graham, Gary O'Neill, Judd Reed. The McKinnon brothers, we had them on a few weeks back and they were talking about Shotokan karate, yep. which is very similar. Hard style karate. Mm. And it does give fighters a good basis. Kyokushin, bare knuckle karate, so there's no gloves. The only thing they can't do is they cannot punch to the face. Punch to the body, knee, uh, elbow to the body, mm. knee to the body, knee to the head, kick to the head, kick to the legs. Yep. No padding. OK, for those that, that aren't fully aware, uh, Andy Hug, as well as a, a sure. huge name, for you MMA enthusiasts, George St. Pierre. That, yep. That's where his background came from. Domestically, though, our, I guess, poster boy for Kyokushin Karate is Peter Graham. Let's check out the Chief and Eric Noosa. He looks tough. He is tough, but a great fella. Big Pete Graham. That's him in the black trunks. Eric Nosa in the white. Nice bobbing and weaving from the Chief. Nosa throwing some big bombs early. Nosa with some big victories himself over the last eight or nine months in particular. Of course, with the Glenn Berrigree in the corner. Sort of coming with a bit of a new strategy, but uh, tonight... Oh. Against the charged up Pete Graham with renewed vigour. The all new, reinvented Pete Graham is looking to uh, make a second charge or third charge perhaps on the heavyweight ranks. Nosa's leg is well and truly in bother at the moment. Of course, Graham with that Kyokushin background, Kyokushin Karate, one of the harder styles of karate, renowned for its power leg kicking. That's where Graham got his set up basis in martial arts and is displaying it in fine form tonight. Nosa down again. That left leg, that lead leg is gone. Somehow he gets to his feet. Look at that face, a mask of pain. And he fights on. You know where Peter Graham is going? Straight back there. And the referee, no choice, no alternative but to say that's it. And Peter Graham records victory number 75 in his decorated career. There you go, and the fight that promised so much in the end it was the power leg kicking of the Chief that took its toll on Eric Nosa. The nerves into spasm, the muscle totally gone. Leg kick TKO, the Chief, Peter Graham! Another great performance from the Chief Peter Graham. That's not Mr Miyagi, Daniel Sun type karate. Whilst the movie The Karate Kid probably gave it some free publicity back in the day, I don't think it really does the actual sport and its competitors any great favours. Well, look, a lot of people have, you know, I suppose preconceived ideas about what karate is and what it represents. And there's all different manner of styles of karate. Yep. There's a soft, soft style, there's sport karate, there's full contact, bare knuckle mm. karate. There's, there's a lot of versions of it. And, you know, let's talk about the, the, the kick to the thigh. A lot of people are like, oh, he's kicking him in the leg. It's not that bad. Mm. Well, AFL players, cork thigh. 
what happens? They can't weeks. play. So, you know, there's weeks out. So mm. you can't... It's a very basic technique, mm. but one never to be underestimated. Hammer, as far as broader audiences go coming to kickboxing events, not just here and around the world, it's not just the go, it's also plenty about the show. And this week, under the Hammer's instructions, we're going to take a look at the top five ring entrances of the modern era. And we're going to start with number five, and we're going to start with that crazy West Australian. Let's go to Wes Kappa. Coming your way, all show and all go, here's Wes Kappa. Looks like Spanky out of the Little Rascals with that hat on. And as it really has the chance to lull competitors into a false sense of security. They, they think he's a mug, but he can fight. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, that's right, Wes Kappa, of course, he does the show and maybe the opponents uh, get distracted and just forget about their game plan for just that one moment. But I love his ring. I love the propeller. I'm going to wear one of them, I tell you. <laughs> Mind games. That's what Wes is playing. How important are they? Well, it's not only the mind games, but it's also showing that he's relaxed. Yep. There's no tension there. Wes is ready to fight. He's relaxed. He's dancing. He's, he's taking mm. it really, uh, not lightly, but it's not going to stress him yep. out. And that is really the key. OK, let's check out number four. Here's Soren Mongkongton. The lasers are on. The smoke machine. The entertainment has started. You can hear the noise. WWE visits Chandler, all the razzle-dazzle. And here comes young Soren. One to remember. I remember the night well, a beauty. Well, of course, ring entrances, it's all part of the show. Mm. Sometimes you wonder, do they, do the fighters put too much into the ring entrance and, and not enough into the, into the actual fight? But you know what, Soren and uh, a few other fighters, they're able to do both and it's always a great spectacle. OK, we've seen a West Australian, we've seen a Queenslander. Let's now go to Canberra and let's go to number three, Josh Tonner. Oh, party time, Canberra. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a opponent. Dancing up a tree. Representing the A.C.T. Josh Time Bomb Tanner! Enjoying themselves? It's like a martial arts Mardi Gras. <laughs> a martial arts Mardi Gras, Andy. Uh, that's all I could come up with. <laughs> there's entertaining, there's showmanship, there's just plain weird. <laughs> and that was just plain weird for mine. In, in, good, but weird. Oh, well, look, it was, it's topical. And yeah. uh, it certainly made Josh stand out. And I think his opponent was standing there going, what the hell, you know, is going on here? And again, it causing a great distraction. But I think we're going to start the Hammer Time Fight Entrance Award soon, so... <laughs> Could be far off it. Now, we go to number two. We go back to Queensland. We go to Daddy Cool. <laughs> Dane all business, but the entourage, they love it. Oh, uh, the, the little pimp that comes out before yeah. him has always been a show a showpiece. You know, people actually go to the shows and look forward to Dane Daddy Cool's walkouts. and like, what is he going to do this time? And I think just by that little bit of vision, we've seen why, and he's, he's had many entrances. We may show a few more in coming weeks. I don't know if it's coincidence, but all the entrances so far have been the lighter weights, the smaller dudes. Number one goes to one of our heavyweights, the butcher, Brett Zanchetta. The greatest ring entrance in the history of kickboxing is making its way to centre ring. The big cows. Have a look at it. Have a not one, but two big cows. Here come the butchers, the blood spattered chests, the chainsaws. There is nothing like it in the world of kickboxing, folks. With Jamie Fleming there with the chainsaw. <laughs> It's like a scene out of Scarface, Hammer. The butcher with the cows and the chainsaws pushing boundaries. Let me tell you an interesting point about that. One of the cows was actually Dane Daddy Cool. 
Is so that there's, right? There's Dane Daddy Cool in the cow seat. So, and the butcher, of course, with the with the big meat axe guys with the chainsaws. Everyone in that in that stadium just turned around and gone, what is going on here? It was truly a classic. Dane Daddy Cool then features in spots two and one under an alias, though. That rounds out our top five ring entrances. Now, a big couple of weeks coming up here on the show. Some big names, some big frames in joining us. Certainly, uh, next, next few weeks, Paul Stings Lewinsky back from Miami and he's training in MMA over there. Nathan the Carnage Corbett, everyone's asking for him to be on the show. So you ask, we deliver. And of course, a couple of A1 events coming up in future weeks. One from Dubai, one from Turkey. So there's so much on the calendar. Lots more coming up, Andy. Yeah, we'll preview, review and a whole lot more. All of that are always good seeing you. We hope you guys enjoyed the show. And we'll see you next Wednesday night on Hammer Time. But right now, let's check out some Aussie kickboxing classics.